All week long, we've been talking about John the Baptist and the important work that God did through him. God sent John to get the people ready for Jesus, and he did that by telling them to repent and by pointing them to Jesus as the Messiah and the Son of God. And John did that work faithfully. He did it no matter who was listening. In fact, John preached that same message to the heads of religion in his day, to groups of people known as Pharisees and Sadducees, even though they didn't really want to hear it. John also preached that same message to heads of state. There was a ruler in the region where John preached named Herod Antipas. And one day, Herod decided that he was going to go and marry his brother's wife. And so John told Herod that he should repent. And so Herod told John that he could go spend some time in prison. So here was this guy who had been chosen for this special job even before he was born. He had carried out that job faithfully. And where did it get him? What was his reward? Well, it landed him in a prison cell. In fact, John would never get out of prison. Eventually, Herod had John beheaded. And so it's no wonder that while John was there in prison, apparently he had some doubts about who Jesus was. From his prison cell, he sent a group of his disciples to go and ask Jesus an important question. Are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? Perhaps you can relate to how John felt. It might be easy for us to think that if Jesus really is the Messiah, then being a follower of Jesus ought to make our lives better. But of course, it doesn't take very long being a follower of Jesus to find out that that's not the case. In fact, sometimes it's the very fact that we are followers of Jesus that can make our lives more difficult and painful. And like John, we too might have doubts. Not whether or not Jesus is the Messiah, but maybe whether following Jesus is really worth it. Thankfully, Jesus is big enough to handle whatever doubts we might have. When John sent those disciples to him to ask that question, Jesus sent them back saying this, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Jesus isn't just bragging there. He isn't just showing John his resume. Each and every one of the things that Jesus mentions there is something that had been prophesied about the Messiah in the Old Testament. So Jesus is saying, look at all of the promises about the Messiah that have already been fulfilled and use that as your source of confidence, even as you see other promises that seem like they're not being kept. Friends, it might be easy for us to have the very same doubts that John had and to have the same questions that John asked. And yet, believe it or not, we have it even better than John did. We've seen the entirety of Jesus' work, not just the beginning part. We've seen every last promise about Jesus be fulfilled, including, his, including the promise that he would suffer, die, and rise from the dead. Every last promise about Jesus has been kept. And so even as we see other promises that we still have to hold on to in faith, promises that seem like they're not being kept and seem to be the opposite of what we experience with our lives, promises that God would guard and keep us, that he would always leave us and never forsake us, that he would keep us safe and eventually bring us to our heavenly home, even as we hold on to those promises in faith in spite of what we see, we can be confident, fully confident, that those promises will be kept as well. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, as we wait for Jesus' return, what we see with our eyes is often the opposite of what you tell us to believe. Use the promises you've already kept to give us confidence that you will keep every promise until you bring us to our heavenly home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey everyone, Pastor Mike here from Time of Grace. Thank you so much for investing your limited time to grow in your faith with us. But could I ask you for one more favor? I'm sure you're itching to check out social media or go on to the next part of your day, but you could do a huge help for the kingdom of God if you would rate and review this podcast. Just taking a few seconds of your time will help other people to find Time of Grace, which matters so much to us because we want people to hear about grace, to hear about Jesus, to hear about eternal life. So thanks for taking a little more time. We pray that God blesses you with a great day and we'll see you soon.